Hi there and welcome to my live video. So today I've decided to do something a little bit different. I am, um, I uh, had this idea to start a series of live videos. So today will be the first in a series and you'll have to stay tuned for the rest of the videos over the weeks. And the name of this series is View from the Other Side. So in this series, I'm actually going to talk about what it feels like to be on the other side and um, how they try and communicate with us and, um, and basically also how this world looks or is perceived from the other side. So even issues, problems, whatever, is how it's perceived from the view from the other side. How is it that our, uh, our spirit, our, our deceased loved ones or our guides or, um, or the divine, how do they perceive this world from the other side? That's what I'm gonna talk about in this series. Um, so today, um, I would like to talk about what happens when we die. So why do I talk about this subject? I talk about it because I experienced it. Um, I shouldn't be here today. I should have died on February the 2nd, 2006. That was the day that the doctors said that I was not going to come back. And I had basically crossed over. My organs were shut down and I had literally died from end-stage cancer. But lo and behold, about 30 hours later, I came back, I came out, I was like in a, in a coma, and I came out of the coma, and I knew that it was not my time to die. And a lot happened on that side. But the biggest thing that I wanna say is that that experience changed me. So sometimes people say to me, okay, you were only out for 30 hours, but how is it that it's still impacting you today, like 15 years on, 15 and a half years on. It's because and it's something like that. It changes the way you perceive the world. It changes the way you view life and death and illness and everything. It just changes everything so much that it changes the trajectory of your life. So I view life differently from most people but there are a lot of people who have had near-death experiences like me or who have had spiritual uh, transformational experiences. So they also view life this way. But because it's not the way that it, life is viewed in the mainstream, um, I always have something to say, to add to it, to say, okay, but this is how I see life. Because based on my experience, based on what I experienced at death, this is how I see life. So first of all, I want to start with what happens when we actually die. So before I died, I was in so much pain and so much fear and so much trauma. And I, was, I feared the cancer. I feared death. I feared the stuff the doctors were doing to me. I feared everything. But as soon as my spirit left my body, I felt incredible incredible. There was no pain whatsoever. And I share this with you to assure you that if you have loved ones who have passed away, I want you to know that they felt no pain from the minute that they, their spirit left the body. And here's the other piece, is very often the spirit leaves the body even before the body physically dies. So even if somebody dies, like say, um, through something that looks really painful, like if it's a car accident or something um, that is something that you feel, oh my God, the impact of that was, must have been so bad for them. Actually, they didn't feel it at all. Their spirit had left the body before the pain started in many cases. Um, so my spirit left my body and when I left my body, I felt incredible. I felt light. I felt free. I felt liberated. It just felt really amazing. I noticed that my family around my, who were around my physical body, I noticed that they were, of course, distraught. They were distraught because the doctors said this was it. I wasn't coming back. My organs had now shut down. And they were distraught. But I could see all this happening. But not only that, I could feel their emotions. But even though I could feel their emotions, 
I could feel it. It's like we, when you are without your physical body, you are pure consciousness. And it's like you can step into other people's consciousness and feel what they're feeling. So you know what they're feeling. But I wanted to communicate with them in every way I could to let them know that I was not in pain, that in fact I was free and I felt amazing and I wanted them to know that. And because time is not linear on that side, I had no desire to go back into my physical body. Um, at that point, I had no desire because I knew that at the end of their lives, my family, my husband, my mom, my brother, and everyone, all my loved ones, I knew that they would be joining me where I am. And time would pass in an instant on that side. It feels very, very different. Time isn't linear. And when we cross over, we are without our bodies, without our, um, we are without our um, gender, our race, our culture. All of that we leave behind. And what crosses over is pure consciousness. Pure consciousness with everything that we have learned in this life. Everything, like we take with us all the love that we have accomplished or accumulated in this life. And when you've had a near-death experience, you really know what's important. You really know what's important and what isn't. And what I realized is the most important thing are my relationships with people, the love I feel from other people and for other people, and the love I feel for myself. And this is the thing. One of the biggest lessons I learned was that it's super important to love ourselves because we, too, are a facet of the divine, a facet of God. And in future videos, I'm going to get more into all of that, all of that what it means to be a facet of God and what it means to love ourselves. And I'm going to get more into that. But today I want to talk a little bit more about our deceased loved ones who are on the other side. They are not unhappy. They are not miserable. I know that I came back and I chose to come, came, come back because I was given the choice and because I was told it wasn't my time. I want you to know that if you have loved ones that crossed over, Please do not feel that they didn't come back because they don't love you enough, because that's not true. Once we're without our bodies, all we feel is pure divine love for everybody around us. We don't hold grudges. And when I said that what crosses over is our pure essence and not our gender, our culture, our race, what also we leave behind is any judgments we have, any hatred we have. All of that is part of duality. That's all here. When we die, we don't feel that level of, you know, whatever it is, whether it's revenge, whether it's judgment, whether it's hatred, we don't feel that on the other side. So I want you to know that if you have deceased loved ones that you didn't get along with or people that you disliked or somebody you fought with and they crossed over, they're not holding a grudge with you. They absolutely are not. All they feel for you is pure, unconditional love. And bear in mind that they can't communicate with you in the typical way, because even though I wanted to communicate with my family, I couldn't, because I didn't have a physical body. I didn't have vocal cords or a voice or anything. So I had to, I knew that if I was going to be there for a while, I would have to figure out creative ways to communicate with my family. And believe me, they do, because my loved ones communicate with me all the time. So look for signs. Check out videos I've done about signs and what they are. Um, and create a language with them, which again, I'll get into more in a future video. But please know that they are trying to communicate with you. And one of the ways they do that is by dropping thoughts into your head. Remember I said that when I was on the other side, I could feel what they were feeling. I knew they were in pain. And what I didn't realize at the time is that um, it takes a while to get used to it, to kind of get your sea legs, so to speak. So it takes a while to get a, um, accommodated and to figure it out when you're on the other side. But we are actually able to drop thoughts into the heads of other people. We're kind of able to get into their thoughts. 
And in actuality, even in physical life, we're able to do that with each other. But we don't always um, realize that. We're not aware of that because we, we're not taught that it's the case. And we're taught that, oh, this is, you're crazy if you do that, or it's woo-woo, or it's your imagination. Actually, it's not. When you learn, when you learn that actually you, your awareness, your energy can overlap with other people's energies. And you know how when you're really close to someone and you live together with someone, you can literally finish each other's sentences. That's what you're doing. You know how when you know who's on the phone when it rings, when you haven't even looked at the caller ID, and it's not even someone who calls you often, you have connected with their consciousness. Or when you're thinking of someone and they call you in that moment, that kind of thing happens to me all the time. You know, I literally, I could say something like that happens to me almost every day, where I could be thinking of someone and I open my emails and there's an email from them. I could be thinking of a, of a song and I turn on the radio and there's that song playing on the radio. So it is like consciousness overlap. It happens even in the physical. If we learned to recognize it, and if we learn to be aware of it, and if we learn to actually make a note of it and know that it's not a coincidence, that this is me overlapping with someone else's consciousness. Once you recognize it and you take it on board that yes, this is what's happening, it actually happens to you more and more often. So I want you to know that you can connect with your loved ones all the time. Our loved ones want us to be happy. Um, and no matter what conditions they left under, they are going to find their way. Sometimes people tell me that, what about those who experience hellish NDEs? What about if they, if they cross over and it's unpleasant? Well, let me tell you that when they experience that, I know it feels very real for them, and I, want to, I don't want to undermine that, but that is still a tendril of something that they've picked up from here, from the physical. Once they let go of every tendril of this physical, they will be fine. When I crossed over, I was surrounded by other entities, by other spirits, by my deceased loved ones. I didn't recognize all of them. I recognized many of them, but not all of them. Um, but I knew they were there to help me, to love me, and to support me through this process of dying. That happens to all our loved ones. No matter how hellish it may feel at the onset, and that may be possible because if you've had a really bad life, if you've suffered a lot of trauma, and if you cross over in a sudden way, you might feel a very hellish existence at first. And then the only reason why we would know someone has a hellish existence is because they've come back to tell the tale. Let me tell you that the ones who don't come back are not in hell. I want to tell you and I want to reiterate that as much as you would like, so I know some people try to defend that there's a hell, they would like to believe there is, and they would like to believe that that's where people we hate or murderers and all go to. Let me tell you there isn't because the judgment, the judgment of who goes where, the judgment is a here thing. It's not a there thing. On that side, there is only love, only love, only love, no exceptions. And in another episode, I am going to talk more about the people who are the people who we consider to be criminals and murderers. But once again, I want to tell you that it's a here thing. And over here, if that's what they are, then hopefully they, we either help them to reform and get that connection back because people who, who are like that, people who are murderers or criminals, it's because they're not connected to who they truly are. So either we can create a system that helps them to reform and get connected, or if there's no hope of them reforming, hopefully they go behind bars. But all of that is a here thing. Over there, there is only love even from the people who have committed the worst crimes. So your deceased loved ones are doing great. They're doing fine. 
If they haven't come back, it's because either it was their time to cross over or because they find that they can do more work from the other side. They can love you more unconditionally and support you in a better way from the other side. It's always a more unconditionally loving choice that they make. So, and if they choose to come back, it's because their work here is not complete yet. So um, that was certainly the case with me. My work wasn't complete and my loved ones told me that I needed to come back. Your loved ones will help you to grieve and to get to a place of joy again. Allow them to work through you to do that. Please allow that. Open yourselves up to them. And the way you open yourself up to them is by knowing that it's real, it's true. Don't be um, overly closed off and say, oh, that was just a coincidence, or oh, when we die, we die. It's, the more you open up yourself to it, the more you will see things happen that you will go, whoa, I can't explain that away. Whoa, that is incredible. Um, if I tell people the kinds of things I experience every day, they would truly think I'm crazy. So half the time, I don't express it on social media. I do it privately. I have a tribe. I have a sanctuary. I do it privately. Because when we express it really, really openly, you, when you attract the debunkers and people who, um, who don't believe you, um, it kind of, you kind of feel, oh, I don't want to spend my time defending all this. I just want to get on with experiencing it. Because the lighter you are, the more joyful you are, the more and more you experience it. The more you believe it, the more you experience it. The more you're stuck in the lower density, lower vibration energy of finding that you're defending it and you're fighting off naysayers, the, less, the, the, the more dense your own energy becomes, the less that they can communicate with you. So I kind of move on when people challenge me and say, oh, can you prove it? And can you make, can, can you prove it scientifically? And can you blah, blah, blah? I'm like, nope, I don't need to. That's on you. <laughs> so that's kind of my way of doing things. Um, and just, just to share you, with you one example, but I've shared tons in other videos. And uh, one example would be that in very recent times, um, um, I knew I was being guided by someone, but I didn't know who. And I would keep saying, who are you? Who are you? And I was, it's like this voice that keeps giving me information. And the information is so accurate. And I'm going to teach you in a future episode how to use this, how to tap into it, and how to use it for your own well-being and your own healing. But anyway... I, was, I got burned out recently. I, got, I allowed myself to get stressed out. And this voice was telling me to listen to it, listen to it, that this is your way out. This is your way out. So I was like, who are you? And everything it would tell me was like spot on. I would try this and, and it would work. And, and so it was just blowing me away. And then one day I was speaking to one of my team members, Mitch, Mitch, who does energy healing, and she sees, okay, so Mitch, I'm going to throw you under the bus here. She doesn't like it when people knows this about her. Mitch sees people on the other side. She sees them, and she can describe them. With me, I hear them. I hear them all the time talking to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. They wake me up at 4 in the morning, and sometimes I say, please stop. Don't wake me up. They tell me what to talk about on Facebook, on live. They told me to talk about this, this view from the other side. They told me, you're going to create a series on it and share it with your audience. So you can thank them, and I'll tell you in a moment who that is. And no, it's not Wayne Dyer. This is what's interesting. Wayne Dyer helps me when I'm on stage. I can feel his voice. This was not Wayne Dyer. This was a more demure voice and uh, feminine, a female. And then I say to Mitch, um, that, you know, there's someone helping me out here. But anyway, I've been feeling really burned out lately. Could you just send some energy my way? So when she sends me energy, she's sending me energy, and she sees a figure, and she calls me, and she goes, your paternal grandmother's here. And I said, what? My paternal grandmother? 
Um, I was never close to her. She died when I was six. I hardly saw her. Most of the time, we didn't even live in the same country. I remember what she looks like when I was six, but that's it. I just have like literally a snapshot memory of her. We were never close. Why would she be here? Um, why would she be visiting you? <laughs> and she said, oh, she's visiting me because she says, you're not recognizing her. <laughs> so she came to me because I'm open and because I'm sending you energy and she wants to make herself known to me. Mitch then went on to describe my grandmother, to describe her exactly how she looks. And that blew me away. Dark hair, tied back, um, very round face, short, not tall, kind of roundish, always wore a sari, never wore pants, never wore Western clothes, always in a sari. Um, she just described her, just exactly that was her. That was how I remembered her. I called my aunt and I said, do you have a photo of granny? And she did, because granny is her mom. And my aunt sent me and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. So then um, what happened is that um, when Mitch and I were talking and Mitch said, your granny is back. Now she's saying this. So anyway, one day I got a, a message from whoever it was on the other side, which I still hadn't hadn't yet associated that this voice I hear every day is my granny. I had not put two and two together. So one day this voice is telling me that um, you should only have two things on your agenda and that's it, no more. You're taking on too much and that's why you're getting burned out. And these are the two things. Just focus on your sanctuary and focus on social media, that's it. So this voice is telling me just two things, two things. I'm like, okay. Mitch then contacts me and she goes, your granny, she just appeared in front of me again and she holds out this scheduler, this calendar and on the calendar there's just two things and she's pointing it out to me, two things. And I said, what? I just got a voice telling me I should only focus on two things and you're getting a scheduler. It's granny, that voice is granny and when I established that this voice every day that I hear is granny, that voice was so overjoyed that it has been talking to me non-stop every day. And it wakes me up in the middle of the night and gives me more downloads about everything, about my health, my well-being, about how to move forward in this world, about um, just literally everything. And, and I know now that one of the beings on the other side that was helping me when I crossed over, who I didn't recognize at the time, which I wrote in my book and I wrote everywhere there were beings on the other side, now I know one of them was my granny. And um, in future episodes, I will give you more things that she's, that she's said to me. Um, but anyway, I just had to share that. And real quick, I just wanted to ask Abby, is there, um, are there any comments you'd like to share? And I know I have to repeat it through my mic because of... Okay. Um, we have a bunch of people who are really enjoying hearing from you guys. Do you want to take a couple of questions? Uh, so Abby said that, do I want to take a couple of questions? Okay, let's just do one or two questions. Okay, so Lauren's question is, do I remember the actual crossing over process? Was it instantaneous or was it gradual or was it like walking through a door? Okay, so for me, it was gradual. At first, it felt like I had one foot on each side and then I was like, oh, this is the dying process. And, I was, and it felt good. So it was like I was very, I invited it and I went very, um, welcomingly because I was feeling so awful on this side and so it was like a gradual fading from one existence to another and I believe that when people like die from old age or from illness um, this is how they die but when they die in an accident when it's like a sudden thing it's different 
And I also believe that um, some people say to me that, uh, how come I didn't experience a tunnel? I believe that when it's gradual, we don't do the tunnel. But when it's in an instant, like wham, it's like then they shoot through. It's like they're shooting out of their body. And they, and they experience that tunnel effect and then going towards the light, which is the other side. With me, I kind of gradually phased into the light. So thank you for that great question. Let's do one more. So Judy asks, do I think that the, a person's death, is, the timing is related to the life lessons they needed to learn, or is it, or the people who are left behind, or is it not, are the two not related? So I think it is all of it. And this is a big topic, which actually what I'm going to do, Judy, is I'm going to hold on to your question, because that question, I would unravel it over a good five, seven, ten minutes, because there's a lot to unpack there, because there's a lot about the timing when we leave, and people wonder, like, what about when a whole bunch of people go at the same time? What about uh, something like what's been going on in the last year and a half, where people say X number of people have died due to COVID and things like that? So I actually want to talk about the timing of death as a whole thing in itself. But let me just say one thing. Judy, just to give you something for your question, is that whenever somebody goes, that date is not random. That's what I'll say. It is not random. There is some kind of agreement between them, their soul, your, their soul, and source. So either they have chosen during this lifetime that, oh my gosh, I can't hack it. I need to create a way out, or it's something they contracted before they came in. Um, but it is what I will say is that it's not random. I want to say one other thing. There's some chimes behind me that rarely ever chime this much. I know it's Granny. I know it's Granny applauding me, and it's her saying that you go, girl, you go, girl. Because one of the things I felt why she is behind me and why she's chosen to come and be my angel and my guide is because I believe, and this is what I've started to understand, even though I didn't know her in this life, she died young because I was only six. She was very, very quiet. What I sense from her is that she was repressed. And I am an expression of what she didn't get to express. I am sensing that she was someone who was very connected to the other side and who was not afraid of death and was just done here because she couldn't be all that she could be. And she's seeing what I'm doing, and she just wants to help me and guide me and, and cheer me on all the way. That's what I'm sensing from my granny, and that's why she's here with me. So um, thank you all for tuning in. And remember, I'm going to do more of these, so stay tuned for the next one next week. <sighs>